Why you doing, Tommy? Getting the sauna ready for tonight, boy. Tonight we are doing event meeting. Then I'm going to do some sauna, some cold, some stretching, get make Mr. Slingy, and then chill out. And that's what we've done. Uh, so we're just waiting for the athletes meeting now. After that, we will get Tom down into the hotel gym, do some stretching, do some hot and cold, get him moving good, and then off to his room for him to chill out. Same with Luke, switch off for the night, get ready to get on a podium tomorrow. Is mobility a new thing that they're taking on? It shouldn't be, because it's been in their programme for two years for Tom and three months for Luke, but it's a new thing for them to be doing it. Uh, and the benefits already, they both say they're feeling really good, they're moving better. And how are you feeling for the boys tomorrow? Are you feeling confident? Yeah, I feel sort of too confident in both of them. So I've got a feeling it's going to come down to Tom versus Luke on the stones probably. So it's going to be a bit of a hectic one. Luke's developed into someone who knows how to win. I think there's a big problem with uh, athletes in every sport who don't really know what it's like to win, so they don't know what it's like to push that extra bit harder. Luke's proved himself two competitions in a row now and he's here to make it three and yeah, it's gonna be amazing. It is the eve before Britain's Strongest Man. We are here in our little room. Jordan and Neve Mulligan are here. We are doing a little uh, interview for the documentary, which I'm sure all you guys are well aware that we've been following for the last year and a half to two years, so it's due to come out next year. On Netflix, all going to plan. If Jordan can pull his finger out and not mess things up. Now he's got new teeth, he thinks he's Mr. Hollywood. Same with you, well I am. <laughs> get your finger out, get the edit done. I keep winning, so make me look good there than I do. Interview time. Just a simple question is, where are we in the world and what are we doing here? Are we looking at this or just like you? Uh, myself, yeah. Okay. So, Sheffield, sorry, where are we? We are in Sheffield for Britain's Strongest Man 2021. Um, how are you feeling about it, first of all? Good. Um, yeah, I kind of almost feel like it's like it's combined. So it's like Europe's Strongest Man, Glasgow, it's combined. And yeah, I'm getting that adrenaline kind of coming through me now. I'm getting like waves of it, like when I'm walking, like I feel, I don't know, I just I just feel like I'm ready. Um, I just can't wait for tomorrow, man. I'm just, this, this, this Britain's Strongest Man, like I've competed in Britain's Strongest Man the longest, so that's probably since 2013 or 14, my first one, back in Gateshead. So I've competed every year in Britain's Strongest Man since then. Um, my best place finish was third place last year, so um, yeah, I want to win. I want to win this. I say it for the I message you say I'm doing interviews. Oh, it's right. cool, you can, you can eat, eat the food on the camera if you want. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. I'll leave you guys to it. Um, what was he saying? Sorry. Uh, yeah, so yeah, for me, like competing in, in Britain's strongest man for so long. Um, this is the first time I've ever felt like I can win it. I remember last year they asked me the question, oh, who do you think is going to win Britain's Strongest Man? I'm like, oh, well, Graham Hicks looks good, Adam Bishop, or you know, all these other guys apart from myself. Like, oh, do you think you can win? I said, yeah, I think I've got a good chance. I didn't believe that, but now, like, I genuinely believe I can beat any of these guys. You know, they've, I've beat them every show um, I've done, so. Um, again, yeah, just do what I can do, do the, the best I've ever done before in these events and I wouldn't put in strongest man. Do you feel like you've thrown a spanner in the works like with, with a lot of these guys? One, you're, you are an older athlete. I mean, I know strong man can be older, but you're yeah. an older athlete. But to go from, you know, ra ranking where you was ranked to being literally at the top right now, mm -hmm. like, do you think you've thrown a spanner in the works in a lot of people's mindsets, like, and you've just come out of the sh shadows? I think so, yeah. I mean, people kind of thought, you know, I was a good strength athlete, I was I was decent, but I was never maybe capable of, of winning these big shows. And um, yeah, for me to kind of, I know when I'm at a competition and when I'm in that zone, when I'm in that focus and nothing 
Like, you know what I mean? Nothing can get in my way. Like, nothing can disrupt my my line of thought, my train of thought, my focus, that drive, that ambition, that, that want to win. Nothing can get in my way. And when people see that, I see them crumble. I see people, like, the biggest thing for me is winning World's Strongest Man and everything else is second. Um, but it's just a close second because these shows are f cool to win, man. It's, and it's nice because I think the, I think people see how much it means to me to be Yeah, you go through a long time of like, kind of, like I didn't think there was ever a, a way out for me to, you know, to leave oil, leave that oil job behind which I wasn't happy in, and kind of affected me mentally and, um, and I think people can see how much it means to me, I think, to, to be here and to just do something I enjoy because it's like, I go on about a lot, you know, being able to enjoy your life, be happy and stuff, and I wasn't happy before, you know, I wasn't happy being able to, like, you compete, and then <coughs> I go home Sunday, get a night with Kush, and then have to go back offshore, you know, that, that wasn't me being happy, and I kind of kidded myself for a long time that, um, oh, it was okay, I had a good job, was able to do this and that, but I think when people see me being genuinely happy, like that is, I'm, like, when I'm competing, I'm so happy, so f happy being able to do that because that's my life work since I was 16 I've been training I didn't know what it was for initially but then it all made sense you know I wasn't this confident guy I had all these self doubts I was doubting myself I wasn't happy and you know that's affected other relationships and it's affected Kushi and I with my self doubt my self confidence and you know but now it's, it's so different man it's like being able to say that this is what I do it just sounds stupid sometimes for me to say that because it's like this is something I genuinely wouldn't have ever dreamed of being able to do like a few years ago. It's all just a pipe dream and you know the the emotions I have when they come out and I get choked up, emotional, whatever, they're like they're coming out because I'm so I feel so happy in what I do, you know, and, and that's like that's the way Has a higher prestige among when I'm when I hear it. Why is that, and what does it mean to you? Obviously, for the British athletes, it's the second, probably the second biggest title you can win for a British athlete. Obviously, the world's been first. So yeah, for me, it's a, it's a national title. Obviously, I wanted to do all three this year. Down worlds, COVID stopped me doing Europe's, and I'm going to win Britain's. Britain's, I've had a really good track record with. You know, I started 30th, 9th, 5th third, second, so every year I've improved. So the only way I can do now is to win it and keep improving. I've never ever slipped down for Britain, so this is the only kind of giant show that I've always improved in, so I, yeah, I look forward to it. And it just means, when you say Britain Strollers Man to any member of public in the UK, even big massive hardcore fans, they will say this is one of the biggest titles, if not the second biggest title you can win. So yeah, it's a very special title for every British athlete. What's the, so you've got Brits now, what does it mean in terms of building up to the biggest competition that you're focused on, Worlds? 
Yeah, Britain Strolls, man. Uh, this has always been in the corner, kind of in the back of my mind since after Worlds. You know, obviously, like I said, Worlds Europe's Britain's was the plan this year. Europe's went out the window, so then I was always focused on Britain's, even when I was doing, you know, kind of the Glasgow, other comps. Britain's has always been the one I've had my eye on, and uh, it in the back of my mind. Obviously, the events came out, couldn't ask for a better set of events. Out of all the Giants live this year, it's the best set of events for me. So. So tomorrow, what's your plan like total domination? Yeah, domination. I've said since I've said since Glasgow, you know, um, a lot of people can talk about Arnold's, can talk about stone runs and stuff, but then the day of one three, uh, three and a half years, I've been dominant on stones. One mistake, you know, that's not going to change the way I approach stones, the way I perform at them. I just did that one wee mistake, but you know, I've I've dominated every other stone event I've done. Um, it's out my system now. The dumbbells have been going incredible. You know, the best dumbbell session I did was a week ago, and I'm peaking. It's important to peak right, and I'm feeling like I'm getting stronger as I'm resting. So, you know, our dumbbells I'm really confident with. Yoke, I, I can move a yoke really quick now. You know, deadlift as well. Loading, I don't think I've been beating and loading in the British level for a long, long time as well, and then stones as well. So, you know, you couldn't ask like I said for a better set of events. So. Right, guys, mobility is done. I am just about to head off to bed. I just had an interview with the main man, Mr. White Teeth, Mr. Colgate, Jordan Mulligan. Go check him out for his transformation. Anyway, stay safe, smile, and stay spicy. Hope you enjoyed the video. Yeah.